Welcome back everyone to our restaurant project. In this segment we are going to create the register class. A register is an object in a restaurant that's responsible for functions like calculating the subtotal from the order, calculating tax, calculating the total, and then printing out a receipt to the user. So we're going to get started. So we'll start out by public class register. And then we'll make comments for our fields, constructors, assessors, mutators, calculations or other methods, and our toString, which will probably also be a print receipt method. Alright, so for our fields, we are going to make the tax a constant because every order is going to have the same amount of tax. So we'll say private, final, double tax. And we'll make this 0.06%. And we'll say sales tax as a comment. Now, we can add the static keyword and what static does is that no matter how many registers we create for our restaurant like uh, we might have not just one at the exit but let's say we're in a fast food joint and we have six registers that people can order from all six of those registers will refer to this one memory space to get the amount of the tax and that way there's no way that the registers can be different um, then for we'll need one field for subtotals so we'll say private double subtotal and we'll say private double total and then we'll need an instance of um, currency from the number format class because we want all of our numbers to print out in a currency format. So we'll say private number format numform will be the name of our instance and number format dot get currency instance. And because this is a class that's not in the basic subset, we'll need to import it. So we'll say import java.text.number format. Okay, so for the constructor, it's just public register. And we'll need to pass in an order and for it to calculate. So we'll use a local variable of type order. And then we'll pass in, we'll update order. So we'll say this.order is equal to order. And therefore we need to have a variable for our order. So we'll say order, order is equal to new order. And then also each order has a number um, assigned to it. So we'll need to increment that order for every order. So we'll say order.increment number and no, I'll abbreviate it as and we'll need to create this method so let's go down to methods or calculations and we'll say let's see where is my method for that Interesting, I can't seem to find it in my notes here. Huh. All right, well, 
public. Increment or um, we're getting a number back, so we'll say int increment number, and then we just do we need to create a variable for that. Oh, I think we did it. I think we wrote that method in the order class. That's why. And therefore, we can just uh, increment that number. That's what, what it was. Yeah, so we did that method. And therefore, since we're calling order, we can just increment the order number. That's why I couldn't find it in my register notes. All right, so we'll leave it as is then. All right, so now we need our getters and our assessors for our method. So. Um, so we can get the subtotal and total. So we'll say public double get subtotal and we just want to return subtotal And our mutator for this is going to be to calculate total, so we'll go ahead and put that under calculations. I'm going to say public double calculate subtotal. say we're going to go through the order so we'll say for int i is equal to zero as long as i is less than the order dot get size which is the size of the order we'll go ahead and count up and then we need to create an instance of item and we'll get a particular order out of our array of orders at that particular location. 0, 1, 2, that's the index number of the item in the order array. And then we'll just total it up. So we'll say subtotal plus equals item.getPrice. And then we just need to, when we're done and have gone through all the orders, we'll just return the subtotal. And plus, since we've done plus equals, that's the same as subtotal is equal to subtotal plus item.getPrice. So we're just doing a running subtotal there. All right, we'll need, we can have an assessor to get the tax. So we'll say public double get tax if we're interested in knowing what the tax actually is on a particular order. And we can return tax. And then also we want to be able to calculate the tax on an order. So we'll say public double calc tax. And we use the subtotal times our base tax. So we'll say return subtotal times our constant tax. And then we need to be able to get the total. So we'll say we have an assessor for that. So public double get total. We'll just go ahead and return the total. And then in our calculations, we want to be able to calculate the total. So we'll say public double calc total. And then we say total is equal to the subtotal plus the calc tax method. 
So we're using the calc tax method to calculate how much tax and then adding it to the subtotal. And then we'll return the total. So you can actually call a method in an expression and then use that number that it returns in your expression to get the total amount. All right, we are also going to need a method to clear all the payments in our cash register. So we'll say public void clear payments. And then this will zero everything out for us. So subtotal is equal to zero and total is equal to zero. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. All right, and then we want to have a method that's going to check if the money that the person tenders to us is actually enough. And if it's not enough, then we need to ask them for money. And if it's too much, we need to give them change. So we're going to say public string. And I'm just going to call it check payment. And we'll need to pass in whatever money they give us. So we'll make a lo local variable called payment. And then if payment is actually equal to the total, then we're just going to return nothing because everything is OK. You could actually return a string that says, um, enough money tendered if you want and else if payment is greater than the total that means we need to give them change so we're going to say return here is your change. And we want it in a currency format. So we're going to say call our num form variable and call the format method on it. And we'll pass in payment minus total. And that means because we're subtracting total from the payment and the payment is greater than the total it should give us the amount of money we need to return to the user or the customer in this case. And then our other option here is we need to um, get more money from them. So else if total is greater than the payment, then we'll go ahead and return Please pay plus, and again, well, we want it to look like money, so we'll use numform dot format. Now, in this case, it'll be total minus payment. And then we'll add the string more. Okay. And then we, our last, not least, is our two string for our class. And here's where we're going to print them a receipt if they call the two string. So we can say public
string to string. And we'll set up a local variable to hold what we're going to print out. And I'm going to do some dashed lines here. Start the receipt with some dashed lines. Oops. And the name of the restaurant. And then I'm just going to end with a return character. Oops. And then I want to add order number. Plus, and then I'll do order dot get number. Plus slash n. And then I want to add also to the list the server name. So I'll do plus order.get server. And since all this is still in red, I must be missing a quote somewhere. So let's. Oh, I forgot my quotes here. I also want to add I want to print out the two the two strings of the order so I'll say um, well let's see I want to end this so plus and then some dashes again I'll have to count the exact number of dashes in a minute here. I think I'm going to have too many. I'll just do... Oh, come on. I want to end that one. I'll end with a semicolon and then I'm going to go back here and do str plus equals and another set of dashes so I'm just going to go ahead and copy this set of dashes here oops I wanted to I skipped a line sorry let's see up here I'm going to do str plus equals order dot two string to print out the, the order then another set of dash lines and then I want to to the set of that under this set of dash lines I want to add subtotal colon then I'm going to add in some tabs and then I'm going to add numform dot format and then pass in cal subtotal I'm going to add um, and I'll use three tabs again and then numform 
desktop format, and then calc tax is what I'll call. And I also want to do total. So escape sequence slash n total colon three tabs. Plus num form, so I need to close the quotes. Dot format, and this time I'm calling calc total. And then when I'm done, I need to return str. And I'm going to go ahead and save it quickly check if I missed anything, which doesn't look like it. I will compile and see if we have any errors that we can catch. And it wants a semicolon, so I think I have an extra parenthesis here. doesn't like oh let's see I don't think I need that semicolon there spelling there. That's why it's always important to do a little programming and then look for your errors so that you don't end up with a lot of errors at the end like I'm having to fix. And then it says for check payment I'm missing a return statement. Get rid of the else, make else if and make it an else. Because with two returns, I shouldn't need a return statement. I think we fixed all of our errors and we'll see you next time um, when we start doing the runner for this project and using some of the classes that we've made like order and register see you next time